Hello economic students. So in this video, let's look at the factors that are affecting the price elasticity of supply or the factors that will determine whether a, a supply curve is inelastic or elastic. Spare capacity, production period and durability are the three factors. Now we didn't do this when I introduced uh, elasticity in a previous video. So I just wanted to quickly show you that the definitions for looking at an inelastic supply curve and an elastic supply curve are exactly the same for looking at uh, a demand, uh, inelastic or elastic demand curve. So we've still got the steepness of the curve. We've still got an unresponsive or quantity supplied is unresponsive to a change in price. Uh, we've even got the same numbers here, which leads to the same PES as we did for the PED. So 0.33 below one, which means it's inelastic. Okay. The only difference is suppliers respond differently to an increase in price, don't they? Because of the law of supply versus the law of demand. So there'll be a positive in, uh, response to quantity supplied, whereas demand different. Same goes for the elastic, uh, elastic supply or the elastic supply curve. Note it's flat. Uh, that means it's responsive. Again, I've got the same figures here and the PES is the same as the PED. It's three which means a 1% increase in price leads to a 3% increase in quantity supplied. All right, so what are the factors that would determine or would cause an inelastic supply curve or something with a PES below one, okay? That 0.33 that we just had. So suppliers are not responsive to a change in price, which is important because suppliers would ordinarily want to be responsive to a change in price because that means they can make more profits, right? So the factors are if there is no spare capacity or little spare capacity. Basically what this means is they can't get access to the resources, the, the labor, the land, or the capital to produce, okay? Maybe in the industry, everyone's producing 24 hours a day and everyone's employed, well, everyone that has the skills and knowledge is already employed. So it's really hard to just produce more, okay? That's what capacity is. The second one is about whether or not goods can be stored. And we call this durability. So if the goods can't be stored, if they can't be produced previously and then stored away waiting for the price to go up, then this will lead to an inelastic supply curve. Finally is the time period. So how long does it actually take to produce this particular good or service? Okay, if it takes a really long time, then that's gonna mean that suppliers can't respond to an increase in price. All right, so I want you to pause and I want you to think what are the reasons for these four examples being inelastic? So we've got an iron ore mine, we've got avocados, we've got teachers, and we've got a nightclub. Any others you can think of as well. All right, elastic supply curves. So we have a PES above one, like three in the example that we just looked at. So that means that suppliers can respond to a change in price. And what the factors are, they're exactly the same, we just reverse them. So it means that we do have spare capacity or it's caused by having spare capacity, right? So there's plenty of resources available to produce more of this particular good or service. If goods are durable, then suppliers can produce them in a, a previously, store them away and wait for the price to go up. Finally, if the production period is short. So if you can produce things really quickly and get them to market, well, that's likely to mean that you can respond to an increase in price as opposed to taking a long time. Okay, so our three factors we are the same, we just reverse them. We've got an elastic and an inelastic supply curve. Your job now is to pause and work out why these four products would have an elastic supply curve using the factors that I just described. All right, so a bit of an extension here because we're gonna talk about this here and when we look at the international economy, uh, but elasticity explains uh, part of Australia's economic success because over the period of about 2004 to 2012, we had, well, two mining booms, but really one big mining boom. And that was evidenced by the huge increase in commodity prices. So Australia exports coal and iron ore and some other commodities. The reason price increased so drastically over this period is because of the elasticity of supply, right? Mining takes a long time to do takes a long time to explore and find the, the minerals or the or, or the, whatever you're mining for, that it takes a long time to get the licenses and the approvals from government, and then it takes a long time to actually dig it up. So 
even though the price of commodities was rising over this period, producers weren't able to keep up with the demand. And so prices continued to rise and that was a huge windfall for the Australian economy. Anyway, we'll talk more about that when we get to outcome three. Hopefully you understand the elasticity of supply and the factors that cause elasticity of supply. Bye for now.